today we're altering a really great recipe for a classic Italian style biscotti. And this recipe comes from the King Arthur baking book. And um, what I'm going to do is start with some eggs. We have two eggs and we're going to mix them up with agave nectar. And we have about three quarters of a cup of agave nectar. And we're using this instead of sugar as always. And this recipe is actually even more traditional than the classic recipe that they have in the book in that it's going to have almonds instead of just plain biscotti. Um, and it has almond extract, which is clear, you can't really see it. And to that, we're also going to add some sugar, I'm sorry, some salt and baking powder. We're going to combine all that in our mixer and we're going to beat it for a little bit. Get it nice and fluffy. Well, while this is beating, we'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll add the dry ingredients. As you can see, our eggs are now really light and fluffy and what I'm going to do is add in our flour. We're using two types of flour, using your standard all-purpose flour. And we're also going to add some coconut flour. I'm using significantly less coconut flour than I normally would, simply because the recipe is going to be on the dry side and coconut flour tends to dry it out. We also have some anise seeds and we have um, well, that was the timer because I'm also toasting some hazelnuts in the uh, oven. And while this is mixing, I'm going to go take the hazelnuts out of the oven. So we have a nice, well-mixed batter now. And um, I think I'm going to sort of clean down the sides a little bit, just a little, because we have two more ingredients to add. We're going to add our anise seed, mix that in, and our chopped almonds. And it's a rough chop because we're going to be cutting the cookies and then rebaking them. These almonds have been toasted, so they have a nice crunch to them. And next, after this is fully mixed, I'm going to form this into two loaves and place it on a pan and put it in the oven. While our other biscotti is baking, I'm starting another recipe. Same, same type of thing, but we're using um, hazelnuts this time instead of almonds. So we're going to be using vanilla as our spice instead of almond extract. So we start with the two eggs and the two thirds cup of agave nectar. And uh, I'm sure I'll get more of this out of this container in a minute. And we have our one teaspoon of vanilla. You can use vanilla extract. I use vanilla paste because it's, it's more intense in its flavor. It really, really brings out the vanilla. We have a little bit of salt and a little bit of baking powder. And we're going to beat these up until they're light and fluffy. Okay, our eggs mixture is very light and fluffy and now what we're going to do is add our flours. We have, again, the all-purpose flour. It's about one and three-quarter cup of flour. Get that all in there. And then we have coconut flour. Again, to use against the, uh, the agave nectar to get the, um, the liquid absorbed. We're going to mix this together until it's well blended. And then we're going to add toasted hazelnuts. And I've given these a rough chop and, and not even all that rough because we want to have some big chunks in there. Okay, this looks nice and we're going to uh, Mix in our nuts, give it a good mix. And after this is mixed again, um, this time we're going to try again to make 
two loaves so I can make smaller biscotti. Okay, I managed to get them into two loaves and you can see that I've smoothed out the tops of each of the loaves so we don't have too much bumpy stuff going on there. And, um, and I tried to make the edges as smooth as I could you know, because there's a lot of nuts there. And now I'm going to pop these into the oven for about 20-22 minutes. Well, right now what I've done, let me move this parchment paper out of the way, is I've taken the, um, the first baking of the biscotti and uh, right before, about five minutes before I sliced it, I sprayed it lightly with some water and let that soak in. And that was a tip from the King Arthur people, and they were absolutely right. The, cut, the, uh, the top didn't cr um, crinkle at all. So I have these nice cuts, and you can see um, the, the nuts in the middle. And the bottom is golden brown. And now what I'm going to do is finish cutting the other loaf and um, place it back on the baking sheet and pop it into the oven and bake it for about 20 minutes or so. And then it'll be nice golden brown and very crunchy. These are the finished biscotti. They are lovely golden brown and definitely crunchy. So this is how the original recipe goes with the almonds. And uh, in the oven right now, well actually there's nothing in the oven right now. We're getting ready to slice the hazelnut version and then I'm going to make the carob version. For the third recipe, we're going to do things a little bit different yet again, um, but we are starting with the eggs and the agave nectar, two of the, the primary ingredients. Let me just get some more of this out of here. Um, usually I spray this with a little bit of some non-flavored cooking oil. Now you don't want to use an olive oil because it's going to taste like olive oil. The grapeseed oil is pretty good for that, but since I've been making one recipe after another, it's kind of clinging to the uh, measuring cup. Okay, and we have our salt and baking powder. And uh, in this recipe, we're having some vanilla because the vanilla really brings out the carob flavor. And we're gonna beat this all up like we did those other two recipes until it's nice and fluffy. So while I'm beating this, we can take a short break. All right, now our eggs are really nice and fluffy, and the first thing I'm gonna add is the carob. And you have to watch when you add the carob because carob powder is very, very fine and tends to balloon up. So uh, don't start on a very high speed, start on low speed, and make sure you get it nice and blended. And right on top of that, I'm going to add in the coconut flour. That'll weigh in. I'm just going to mix it in just a tiny bit before adding the uh, all-purpose flour. And I am going to need to uh, scrape down the sides a little bit, but that's not a problem. I just want to do that after I've added all the flours in and mix it up. This is the only recipe that we don't have any nuts, but because we're adding in the carob, it's going to make it kind of dry. So I'm just going to um, leave it just with the carob to have a pure fudgy flavor. And now what I'm going to do is scrape down the sides a little bit and then give it a little bit more of a mix and then uh, lay it out on our baking sheet. Then we'll be ready to stick it in the oven.